Ladies and gentlemen, we've had Star Trek and Star Wars. So why not something like Space Wars Cinematic Class is about to begin. Your professor. Is it? Greetings, salutations, another sundry affair. I am your cinematic professor and purveyor of truth in movies and tonight's lesson plan is a movie called Space Wars, The Quest for the Deep Star. Now, because there's a colon between Space Wars and the title, Quest for the Deep Star, you kind of get the impression that maybe, just maybe, Uncorked is planning a series of these movies that will have the Space Wars saga with different little, you know, subtitles to differentiate them, and possibly even different casts. Who knows? A rather auspicious figuring, what do you say? Now, let me tell you a little bit about Michael Perry. Michael Perry is one of a few actors who has a uh, kind of a, like in the old days when the stars of Hollywood would be associated with a studio. Yeah. He's been working for Uncorked for quite some time, usually uh, cameo roles in a, uh, or part-time roles in a uh, action thriller type thing. Uh, this time, they give him the lead, okay? So this is, this is one of his payback movies, if you will, for being so, so nice <laughs> and sticking around. So Michael Paré heads this all up, and uh, it's, okay... <laughs> Why don't we take a look at it right now? The year is 2980, and we now know that death is not the end. A soul can be extracted from the recently deceased and be used to create a blue liquid called essence. It can bring a person back to life. We'll get her back. I hope so. It's an expensive process used by the rich and powerful. The rest, they do what they can to survive. Stay right there. You told me you're hiding from some dangerous people. Let's knock on the door. I spent the last year searching for the Deep Star, a bounty so big that the entire galaxy could be yours. People have been looking for the Deep Star for years. They can't be found. It's because they can't find the distress beacon. I know where it is. If we find the Deep Star, we can get enough credits to bring Mom back. Blast off. Guys, we have company. You can run, but you cannot hide. Prepare for impact. I am now authorized to take action. <laughs> Now you die. No! Okay, so let me set this up for you. Let me uh, butcher some names for you, too. As I said, Michael Pare is... Uh, Pare, if you will. <laughs> Not to be confused with the uh, water, right? Uh, he plays Kip, all right? And he's kind of a... Uh, well, he used to be a nice guy. Now he's kind of just a rogue going through space, stealing whatever he can, trying to get by, making it his daughter... Is played by Sarah French. That's Taylor. Uh, she's an interesting character, although you can see the surprise coming for a while. They don't reveal it till the end. And uh, she's an interesting character. I'll say it at that. And the heavy in this is Dykstra, it's played by Oliver a Gunner. See what what happens is in the it's a typical sci-fi where you have the elites versus the common people, and in this. Story, Kip represents the common man. The uh, populace discovers that when you die, you actually do have a soul. 
And when you die, that soul can now be captured and turned into a blue liquid. And then that liquid can rejuvenate someone who has died and let them live on. So the elites are gathering all of this blue liquid and keeping themselves alive while the commoners just kind of uh, pass away. Now, it's like a, a soil and green type thing, except instead of eating the people, you're drinking their essence to stay alive. In between all this is a, is a ship called the Deep Star. And the Deep Star is a ship that went missing long ago, but was rumored to have an extraordinary treasure on it. Now, Kip thinks, along with, with Taylor, if they can find this ship, well, they'd have an awful lot of money, and then what they want to do is buy some of this blue stuff to bring Kip's wife, Taylor's mom, back to life because she has she has died. Okay, noble intentions, but naturally Dykstra wants Deep Star for an entirely different purpose. He wants to rule the universe, and therein lies our dilemma. <laughs> All right, let me tell you what's going on here. This movie was written, directed, and edited by Garo Setien. He's not done a bad job on this. I got to tell you that the special effects were done by Steve Clark. And when you stop and think that, you know, this movie really is an independent movie and had a, a limited budget, given what normally comes out of, of Hollywood, they didn't do a bad job on this. You know, some of the, they at least tried to put in some really interesting creatures in this. Uh, a lot of them look like what you would see on a sci-fi Saturday night. You know, the matting is there, and, and at times it's really, really obvious that it's matting. Uh, but it's there, and it, you know, it's not as bad as some of those giant crocodile movies or <laughs> giant snake movies where you're going like, who the hell did this? <laughs> you know, it's not quite that bad. Uh, and I give them kudos for at least trying to get get through the thing and, and make it worthwhile. And we do have a few interesting designs on the monsters here. Some of them look pretty uh, pretty decent, uh, pretty good design. Our director of photography for this was Michael Sue. Michael's not done a bad job, considering there's a lot of shots in here that are just SFX, uh, and he works those into the live-action shots. So uh, all in all, uh, not too bad. So you got a, a basic plot here. You got possibly have, pardon me, possibly a story that could launch a series of stories. You know, it may be time <laughs> to take a little pause here. Go back to the early Cretaceous period for the nation's first and only prehistoric film critic, Rex. You know, there are just some times when you want to just sit back and put on a kind of mindless movie where it doesn't really tax your brain too much and you just kind of watch the images flash in front of you, kind of enjoy yourself and, and let things go. And if you're in that type of mood, usually they're on a Saturday night <laughs> after a few libations, Space Wars, the quest for Deep Star will fit the bill. We're going to give it a fair to middle in grade, say we'll give it a C. Uh, it's worth a view. If it you are so inclined. And now that you have learned what you have learned, here it is.